Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. We just want to say welcome for all of you that's here this morning. Those of you that are online, I see the light back there. I know you're, we're, we are live right now streaming. It's good to have everybody there, whether you're in your home or whether you're at work, wherever you are, we know that God's going to meet you where you are and touch your life right now. Amen. Father, you are God of the impossible. You are the God that no matter what's going on, no matter what, uh, no matter what the doctor's report might say, no matter what the bank account might say, no matter what, what internally what, what, our, what our heart is saying when it, when it grows faint, Lord, you are the God that restores, that revives, that sets free, and that heals. And Father, we are going to glorify you, to magnify you. We're not ashamed of you. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus, and we're going to see miracles happen right now. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. And everybody says... Amen. Let's do it. Here we go. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. And there is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. Yeah, you've already won. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you, and there is no army with the power to conquer the truth. You've always been with us, every battle you've already won. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough. Oh, yes, it is. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can't part. He's the God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible. There is a king now that's advancing at the speed of light, and in his kingdom, every dead thing is bound to rise. Oh, God, our Redeemer, he is faithful to revive. Oh, he will revive. Come on, sing it, church. Show. 
Child. 
one big choir. Free. that you're grateful that he called you by name he knows your name and he's calling you right now you know our name Lord come and move in power move in my Jesus come on and move come on and move come on and move Come on and move, come on and move, come on and move, Lord. Come on and move, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Come on and move, Lord.
every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We have 
We have another worship song we're going to sing and we're going to worship God together. But before we do that, I want to do what this song says. I want to make room for the Lord. And so just like we did in the first service, this service too, if you're here today and you're sick in your body, you need God to do something. You physically, maybe you're watching us online and you're, you're home by yourself or maybe you're home with your family. Whatever, you, whatever you're dealing with right now, I'm just believing God to heal you, to bring strength to your body. And actually what we're going to do is this. If you're here in this room and you need for us to pray for you, for God to bring a healing about. Maybe you've got something going on in your life and the future's coming up and you need something, God, to do something for you physically. I'm going to just make room for the Lord right now. If that's you, we'd love to pray for you. Our prayer team will be here. I'll be here. We'll anoint you with oil, pray with you. Whatever your, whatever your, maybe, your ailment may be, we believe he's the great physician. Amen? We believe it's very biblical to anoint people with oil, pray for the sick, see God bring a recovery in their body. So as we sing this worship song, this next song, if you're here and you need God to touch your body, I want you to step out from where you are and let us pray for you right at this altar and bring, ask God to bring healing to whatever you need right now in the name of Jesus. Let's worship together. Let's set an atmosphere of worship in this place and let God do his work, his healing work. His supernatural healing work in this place, we pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Yes and amen. He is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is an awesome God. Yes, he is. He's an awesome God. I want you to take a moment, if you would, and, and just greet someone around you before you're seated. Just tell somebody around you, it's good to see him today. Maybe it's a, maybe you can do it virtu- virtually. Long distance, wave at you. Hey, how you doing? Good. Maybe close up, who knows? We're just glad you're here. Welcome to Praise Assembly. We're glad you're here today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being at Praise in these moments today. We want to say thank you for being here. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Praise Assembly. Your first Sunday in October. If you are a guest with us, please make sure you let us know who you are. At the end of the service, there's a card in front of you. At the end of the service, turn that card in and tell them you're a guest out in our foyer. We have a host couple that'll be there. And tell them you're a guest and they will give you a gift to say thank you for being at Praise. We are glad you're here. We're glad you joined us online. So glad you're watching us online today. For wherever you are, uh, man, some, at, at, for, some point, for some reason, um, California is like the number two uh, state that watches us online. Isn't that great? <laughs> California has been. Sometimes it's North Carolina, but uh, California's watching us. So we're just glad you're watching us wherever you are. Thank you for joining us online. We're glad you're here with us today. I am going to uh, encourage you. If you are a member of this church, or you're part of this church, this is your church home, maybe you're just a guest, but truly, if you're if this is part of your church home, I'm encouraging you to be a part of our missions emphasis as we leave this service today. Um, we're going to ask people to commit to missions. It's been a great week. It's been a busy week. It's been a, there's been a lot going on this week when it comes to foreign missions, local missions, what God has been doing. Uh, I've got to tell you this week, we've had missionary last week and challenge us to step out and go. Uh, Wednesday night, we had coffee with missionaries. If you were here, you, and we, you knew what it was like for see the 11 missionaries you got to he, see and talk to right in front of your face. A lot of moving parts. And it was a great day Wednesday evening. Friday, man night was, was great. We had a great time. Jimmy Sellers spoke. He told me later, he said, I never saw so many men energized to do missions. Uh, it, it was amazing how many men came up to him afterwards wanting to go. Where, can I go to Ecuador? Can I go to Honduras? Can, can I go to Ukraine? Can I go to, to Vanuatu, wherever? I, Ukraine's probably one of the places he mentioned. And how energized men were. Ladies' tea yesterday, what incredible, elegant, well-dressed, I mean, it was well-dressed ladies, nice ladies' tea. They even let me have some finger food. I kind of snuck in the kitchen, and they, they gave me a few sandwiches. But first class all the way, I mean, I'm so thankful for, for Vanna and Phil and John and Irene and Sister Ruth and and uh, just everybody, I'm going to leave somebody out, uh, Amanda, all, all the people that were involved in putting these things together. It was a big deal, and I want to say thank you for that. Let's give them a hand because there's been a lot going on this week. A lot going on this week. And uh, like I said, Wednesday coffee with missionaries. I know we had a good crowd. I mean, we, we had some of us took Wednesday night off because you didn't have your class, which I, I hate that, but uh, you missed it. You missed it. But we had a great time Wednesday night, and you should have been here. If you could have been here, you should have been here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I said it. You should have been here. Yeah, I said it. You should have been here to hear these stories. We had a young, we had a young lady with us, Taylor Davis. I don't know if you ever met Taylor or not. She's a young lady who is a missionary, 25 years old, going to a country. I can't say what country she's going to. And was so impressive, so impressive in sharing where she's going and sharing her heart. Um, wow, what an opportunity. I'll probably see her tomorrow at a missions gathering again tomorrow. Um, out, of the, out of the city but, um, and with other missionaries. But I can tell you, what an impressive day. So Wednesday night was a good thing. But, of course, Wednesday night we have small groups coming up, so we'll see you then, right? Here's what I will say, that at the end of the service, we're going to challenge you to give and go when it comes to missions. If you walked in, you should have received. If you didn't receive a missions card like this, as all for Jesus. If you didn't receive one, would you lift your hand? I want to make sure you get one. All for Jesus. And all this is is to say, look, uh, this year, this year coming up, I want to be a part of what God's doing in missions through praise assembly throughout the world. It's not just about us, by the way. It's about what God's doing throughout the world. We can ask you to make a commitment to missions. It helps us with our missions budget, helps us figure out what we're going to do in the coming year. Kim and I had a privilege of being Thursday night at a banquet uh, for, uh, for our Radiance Women's Center, which helps 
counsel ladies uh, who are pregnant not to have abortions, but to, to find a, a better way. You know our church gives to that every single month? Do you know that? You give to that every month. Thousands of, we've given thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars to that ministry. And you know, how we, you know how we do it? You don't do it because I say we do it. I do it because you guys, here's a vision. You guys say, I want to be a part of missions at Praise Assembly. We've given away, what, four cars to accelerate? I mean, one before we even started the program we gave, here, gave away. For young people aging out of foster care. Why do we do that? How can we do it? Because you guys give. Think about it. There are young people today who are in church on college near colleges because you guys gave to Chi Alpha which is a campus ministry of Summers of God and because of that your college students have gotten saved and now in church somewhere I'm, I'll never forget this I'm not preaching but I'm going to say this I had Joe Holloway who's the campus minister at Clemson University Chi Alpha ministry he looked at me and said I know a young man from Beaufort. He came to our Calpha ministry at Clemson, gave his life to Jesus. I said, that's great. He said, he graduated Beaufort High School. I said, that's great. Just a few years ago, he told me this, three, four years ago. He said, I want you to know this young man had never been in a church in his life. Never been in a church in, a church in his whole life. He lived in our community. Went to college campus, and for whatever reason, God orchestrated something for him to come to a campus ministry and get saved. You know you give to campus ministries through the state, throughout the state? You give to that through missions. There are high school students that are in young life who will go to camp this summer, have an encounter with God, and you are a part of that. There are missionaries all over the world who share the gospel, who will build buildings, who will do a work for the Lord, who will be in places that you can't, you, you can't go outwardly. You've got to be like, quietly go there. And because you're giving to missions, you're a part of that. So I'm going to challenge you today to give, to stretch yourself, to go be above and beyond what you think you can do, to give towards missions. I heard, I heard a story the other day of, of a lady who, who gave a million dollars to a TV evangelist. True story. It, it was in a church that I know very well. She did it. And she's sitting in the church, and she did it. All she had to do was Google the guy's name, and she probably would have thought twice about doing that. I'm not asking you to give a million dollars to an evangelist. I'm asking you to give what God, whatever God has blessed you with, a portion of that through the local church. And everything you give will go to reaching people, either in this community, in the state, or all over the world. I'm telling you, it's what we do. It's what we do. It's what you do because of your giving. So I'm going to compliment you on giving this past year. You've been very generous. We're looking forward to 2022 to be even better so we can do more. So we can do more. There's a uh, pastor friend of mine who's in a very troubled church. You know, Praise Assembly is not a troubled church. You know that, right? It's not a troubled church. We're unified, pretty much. I think the, the, maybe the best disunity we have is, is and says, I'm going to give you a Georgia Bulldog shirt. And say the game card. That's the only kind of disunity we ever have. But let me just say, he's in a troubled church, struggling, working 40, 50 hours at Walgreens and pastoring a church in the upstate of South Carolina, really needing fellowship, really needed need to get away. Can't afford it. Church can't afford it. He can't afford it. I told him one day, I said, tell you what you do. You register for this conference. We'll pay for your registration. And you pick out a hotel. We'll pay for your hotel, man. Anything you need, we believe in you. We believe in what you're doing for God. And we believe it's going to help you. And he did. And he said he came away blessed. You know why we can do that? We can do that because you give. Can you imagine that? Because you give. So, at the end of the service, our ushers will be at the doors for tithes, if, as your tithe uh, kiosk is open, text giving, all that's available. But also, as you leave today, we're going to ask you to make a commitment and a first fruit offering, kind of a portion of your commitment, to give that today as an offering, but also make a commitment to help us. Kim and I have already done I'll, I'll share about it at the end of service, about how we came up with what God spoke to our heart to do. But I'm going to ask you to give generously and commit generously to God's work. We're blessed today to have the area directors of of Central America here today. They are, they are choice people. They were on staff at Praise Assembly many years ago. 
and, uh, and year, way before I was here, way before I was here, but uh, have, man, really flourished, doing a great work for God. Blessed. I think you'll be blessed by their word. This is our last missionary we have speaking. Can you imagine the last missionary? So help me welcome Jay and Nancy Dickerson to Praise Assembly of God. Good morning. Good morning, Praise Assembly. It is good to be here this morning. It sure we is. We are excited about what God is going to do in the hearts of each of you. As you commit, maybe some of you beyond what you feel you're able to do, That's maybe right. some of you have never committed before, but God wants to bless you abundantly more than you can think or imagine. You all have been partnering with us mm -hmm. for Many, Many years. years. And we want to say thank you. God is good. That's right. We are so thankful for your partnership with us because it's your fault that we're where we are. That's right. And what we do, we do together. Amen. You all are part of everything that we do and have been so faithful to stand in the gap with us and mm -hmm. believe in us as we continue to do what God's called us to do. You know, hearing what you've been sharing about what you're doing, I, I'm... I'm thrilled, and as a missionary who receives the blessing, I want to say thank you, and that what, we're, what we do is only through your support and prayers, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I probably didn't seem spiritual, but I'm really proud of you. I'll just have to say that. I, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the things your heart for. This church has a legacy of missions. We were on staff here, and we were called as young people to missions, but while we were here, as God said, now it's time to go. Now, Actually, um, John and Irene were with us. We were on a board. Uh, we went with the board to Atlanta for a, a district missions fly-in. And it was that weekend, they were serving on the board at that time, that God spoke to us. And we were crying, bawling like babies. And, you know, God saying, what are you doing? It's your time now. And the church going, isn't that nice? God speaking to them. And, and he was. And everything, we went back to our room that night and said, you know, God spoke. And we said, we're not going to talk about it. We just Because we knew as soon as we talked about it, everything was going to change. So we got quiet about it, and then all of a sudden we started talking, and God changed the direction. But I believe that this, this church, the, the history here, has a huge part. And, and today I'm thinking about the different things that, that we get to do. Um, I, you probably can't see this, but I had this bracelet on that I got in El Salvador recently. As we were there at a Freedom Center, as a living free center, where young men who were in the gang went to jail, prison. They were murderers. I mean, they're their life story. And they, they met Jesus in prison. And then this church, this uh, outreach, they now have a freedom center where these young men who have come to know Jesus come out and be discipled. And so we get part of that because we help raise some, some support for that. And now we're getting to see young men whose lives are changed, and hearing them, they're being discipled. You have a part of that. So I wear this bracelet to remind me to pray. And I, and I think if you're talking about college ministry, today at 5 o'clock this afternoon, we have a new church being launched on a campus in San Jose, Costa Rica. Young people, and we're a part of that, so you're a part of that as well. Young, a campus of about 60,000 people that need to hear about Jesus. This afternoon... That church is being launched. You have a part of that. And so we, we are proud of you. Thank you. So the investment you make makes a huge difference. So we are grateful for, for you. Um, I had nothing to do with my message, but it's all your fault because you're sharing about what the church is doing. And, it just, and I, just, I want you to know that what you do makes a difference in lives. It's not just about, about buildings. And, and I think because when we were here, we were in a different place. Praise Assembly is not this beautiful building, even though it's building. It's you. It's the people. And so may God use you to re May there not be another young people from Beaufort High School who has not been to a church, heard the message of Jesus. Amen. May that motivate Amen. us. May that stir our hearts to make sure that each person has, a, has an opportunity to receive from Jesus. Well, we serve as area directors for the seven countries of Central America. We have 100 missionaries doing all kinds of stuff. And it's, it's exciting what they're doing. But it has been a very, very tough almost two years now, year and a half, as, as, as COVID has taken the lives of some of our superintendents in Guatemala and, 
and in Belize, our superintendent passed away, and then the assistant superintendent about two weeks ago passed away. I mean, in young, 40s, you know, and we have a pastor of a very large church, very dear friend who passed away, our national leaders, and it's still going on. And I was reading this earlier, and I, I'm, this, I, I want to read this because in Nicaragua, it's um, really tough right now. One of our, our missionaries, pastors of church, in the past couple of months, they've buried 60 people from families and from members. But one of our, our missionaries is talking about that they're going out with a team. They're doing the COVID pastoral care. Right now, they're helping provide care for 60 pastors who can't get oxygen. They're going out and, and getting oxygen, sending teams out. Well, the way they're able to do what they're doing and ministering to over 200 families right now is because of faithful supporters. People doing some missionaries are doing all kinds of different things, but your prayers and support helps them keep doing what God has called them to do. It has been very difficult, but God. Amen. You know, I was reading um, in Romans, and it blessed my heart when I read it because it just kind of jumped out. Has that ever happened to you? You read something and like, what? this wasn't here yesterday. I mean, last time I read through Romans, I sure didn't read this. But God is good, and his word never changes, but it is so relevant every day. And when I read Romans chapter 5, I think it's verse three or four in there, it says we're going to suffer. None of us like to talk about suffering. Mm -hmm. we, we don't even want to think about it. But you know what? It says that when we suffer, we're not without hope. That when we dig into God, when we seek God with all of our heart, what happens in us? His character is built in us. And this character produces hope. Right. And hope produces joy. So in a time when it seems hopeless, we're not without hope. That's right. Because Jesus has already gone before us. He knows what's going on. We don't understand it. He knows what's going on. In fact, in El Salvador, we had a, a group that called one of our missionaries and said, we, we know of a situation in a community as several hours outside of um, El Salvador, San Salvador. And we, we just feel the Lord prompting us to go but well we don't have anything to take with us do you, do you have any provisions and he looked and to see what he had on hand and he realized that he had some bgmc funds thank god for boys and girls missionary campaign because it is providing challenge. food during this time challenge okay yeah, boys and girls missionary regular, challenge yeah. It was BGMC when I was here teaching children years ago. It was Boys and Girls Missionary Crusade. And I'm still stuck on that. I'm sorry. But anyway, that's irrelevant. But he, had, he, he, he got some money, and he bought food, and he called these people and said, I've got the food. Come get it. They separated it into bags, and they had 100 bags. And they're like, you know, we're going to this community and we realize it's not going to meet all of the needs, but we know that God's in this. And they went with hearts just full and ready to bless these people. And they went door to door, knocking on doors, handing out food, praying for people. People got saved. They got healed. And the end of the day, they all get together and they, they, can't, they can't stop talking about how, God, how good God was. Oh, my goodness, we went to this house. The whole house got saved. And someone else, well, we went over here. This lady was laying in bed. She could not get up. She'd been laying in bed for a long time. We prayed for her. She was up. And it was amazing. And they're going back and forth. And someone says, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what God did. Well, yeah, we're talking about it. No, no. How many bags did we have? How many bags of food did we have? A hundred. We gave out over 200 bags of food today, guys. Amen. You know what? We are not without hope. When we think that we, we don't have it, let me tell you something. It's who we give it to because God will bless what right. we have and multiply it as he did in this community it made an impact in this little community, and there are people that are saved and loving Jesus today mm -hmm. that had not been Christians. You know, our missionary says, I'm praying for the COVID revival. I'm tired of this time being marked by death and by sickness. Right. I'm ready for I'm ready for COVID revival. And you know, we know what Second Chronicles 7:14 says. Say it with me. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and 
pray and seek my face, then, then will I hear them and I will heal their land. We need a healing in our land. Amen. And I want you to join with us. We want COVID revival. Wouldn't it be wonderful for the wind of the Holy Spirit to sweep across this world and change lives? Is it the greatest revival we've ever seen? I'm ready for that. We all need something new and fresh and alive and COVID revival. Amen. Let's pray for it together. Amen. Well, you said something that I really, I mean, a lot of things you like, but one thing really stuck out to me was it's not what you have, but it's who you give it to. You know, a little boy had lunch, wasn't enough, but who did he give it to? Jesus took it and fed 5,000 right. people. So there is hope in the middle of hopeless times. And so as we share today, what we want you to remember is this, that our obedience brings freedom. Say that with me. Our obedience, our obedience brings, brings freedom. freedom. If you will, turn with me to Joshua chapter 3. I think we have it on the, on, uh, on the whatever you call those things, right there. <laughs> Joshua chapter 3. We're not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to read a couple of portions here, and I want to... You know the story. Joshua was with the children of Israel. They were at the Jordan River, and they were about to cross over into the Promised Land. But before they did that, they had to go through the river. Now, these young people had heard the stories from their parents 40 years earlier when they, when they encountered the Red Sea. And that time, God parted the water, dried the land, and they walked across. This time it was going to be different. This time the water was not going to part until the priests put their feet in the water. They were not going to see the miracle until they took a step of faith. I, I like it when the water parts and see the dry land. But uh, unfortunately, God calls us to step in the water to see what he wants to accomplish. And our obedience brings freedom. Well, verses 5 and 6 of chapter 3, Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priests, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Let me stop there for a second. The Ark of the Covenant was representative of the presence of God. He was not going to move unless the presence of the Lord led him. There are many times I want God to do what I'm blessing, but what I'm learning from this passage is learning to seek the presence of God and allowing Him to lead you. I'm a, I was sharing earlier, I'm a to-do list person. If my day is successful, I can cross a bunch of stuff off my to-do list. I got apps for it. Well, if I can't find something, I'm going to make something up just so I can cross it off and feel good about myself. I know no one's like that here. It's just me, the warped missionary. But in God's kingdom, your to-do list really means nothing. It's all about his to-do list. And his to-do list is based on his presence. And Joshua had learned that. We're not going anywhere unless the presence of God leads us. There's so many times I could share the story about the presence of God and feeling that, seeing, noticing, and, and just feeling that presence. I don't want to move without it. That's what Joshua was saying. So down in verses 12 and 13, he says this, Now therefore take twelve men from the tribes of Israel, from each tribe a man. And when the soles of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing, and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. That day the priest, when they stepped in the water, then they were going to see the miracle. There are times God calls us to step in the water. A time where you it's risky. Obeying the voice of God is risky. It's, it's a challenge. It's, it's not for sissies. But in this story, we see Joshua was their leader. But he was at the point of, of going in the Jordan. But understand the context. Forty years earlier, he had been part of the children of Israel who came out of Egypt. He had been part of the children of Israel who went through the Red Sea and experienced the miracle. And when they got to the other side, he was one of the 12 spies that Moses sent into the promised land to give a report. Well, Joshua and Caleb came out and says, it's a beautiful land. They got these big old grapes. I mean, it, it, it's something. There's some giants there, but we can take them. Two of them said that. The other ten said, yeah, it's a beautiful land. Got all kinds of good harvest, but the giants are there, and they're too big for us. They listened to the report of the tents of the next 40 years they wandered in the desert. 
Whose report are you listening to today? Well, they wandered, and during that time, Moses was their leader, but Joshua was the assistant. You read the times where, where Moses went into the presence of the Lord, and he said he was so impacted by the radiance that his face was just white and just so bright, they had put a veil on him. You know, I, I really believe, side note, I believe when we're in the presence of God, people will notice something different. If we're not in the presence of the Lord, I think you talked about it yesterday, being in the soul room, being in the presence of God on a regular basis. So people will come up and say, what is different about you? Well, Joshua was there, and as you know, Moses experienced it. But if you read through the Scriptures, Joshua experienced the presence of the Lord as well. In fact, there are times when Moses came out and Joshua stayed behind. So through their journeys, all the people saw that Joshua was the heir apparent. He would be the next leader. So when Moses died, they all saw Joshua was the leader. Now Joshua, these years later, was, was to take the people of Israel, the Pueblo de Dios, into the promised land. He knew in his head he was leader, but I don't think it had gotten to his heart because he began to see this, this amount of fear. If you look in um, Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, it's interesting. I was reading through, and in three times it says, Be strong and of good courage. Be very strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. And I thought, wow, that's three times in a row. I wonder what that means. So I looked it up. When there is something that is three times in a row like that, God is getting your attention. God wanted to get Joshua's attention because Joshua knew it in his head. He knew that Moses was gone, but in his heart, he needed to be reminded. And God said, hey, whoa, you know I've chosen you. Be strong and of good courage. You're the man. How many times do we need to hear God say to do something mm. before we do it? Yeah. How many times must he remind us, be strong That's and of right. good courage. I've called you. I need you to do this. Mm. Are we willing to step into that and say, Lord, if this is my day, if I'm supposed, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. I can take these people through the, through the Jordan River. I don't know what your Jordan River is. I don't know what you have coming up, but I want to tell you something. Be strong and of good courage because God goes before you. He wants to use you in a powerful way. You know, Nancy, last week you were talking about this, and you felt like the Lord gave you a picture of, of, of training wheels on a bike. And I really think it's important that you, you, know, you share that. Are you want me to? Are you going to start crying? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it depends. It depends. Yeah. No, you know, I, was, I was praying last week, and, and the Lord showed me this picture of, um, of a dad helping his child learn to ride bike. And you remember, I don't know, I, I remember having training wheels and then those training wheels were gone and all of a sudden my dad's holding the back of the bike and, and, and he's, he's going with me as I, as I start to, to pedal that bike and all of a sudden I sense that he's not around. And I'm like, whoa, wait, and I get wobbly and, and then straighten back up. And my dad's, you got it, Nancy, keep going, you got it, you got it. Let's go, girl, go. How easy is it for us to let the wobbly faith just derail us? That's right. God says, I've got it. That's right. I'm with you. Be of courage. I'm with you. Be mm -hmm. strong and of good courage because I'm with you. I've got you. You don't need me hanging on. Right. You just need to know that my presence is there, and that's mm -hmm. why it was so important for Joshua to make sure the presence was there with them when they were going across. That's right. His presence is with us. His presence is with mm -hmm. us, and he says, be strong and of good courage. I just love the picture of the wobbly faith because maybe you're at a place where it's something is really challenging, bigger than you, and you feel like, can I do that? Well, it's okay to, to go through with the wobbly faith, realizing that he'll be with us. Joshua was there, and he heard the voice of God, and he knew in his heart that this experience was a huge challenge for him. Because, see, if he obeyed the voice of the Lord, it would bring freedom. Freedom first for him, because it would change from being leader in his mind to leader in his heart. Because in verse 7 of John 3, the Lord says, Today I will exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so they will respect you just like Moses. You will be that kind of leader today. 
So his obedience and stepping in the water was going to bring him freedom. But his stepping in the water would also bring freedom for the children of Israel because their wandering days were over and they were going to enter into the promised land. I want to challenge you to know that our obedience to the voice of God brings our freedom, but also brings freedom to those around. I don't know what you're facing. Maybe you're facing something that has nothing to do with missions or, or listening in. You've been struggling with something. I want you to know this is your today. God wants to exalt. He wants to bring you freedom by obeying His voice. But as Joshua learned and I'm learning, obedience isn't for sissies. Stepping into running water is not an easy thing to do when there's a chance for failure. But our obedience brings freedom. You know, I think of someone who had to wait in the Bible, and, and immediately I think of Noah. Noah heard the voice of God, didn't he? God said, okay, I need somebody to build a bark. Uh, build a bark. Build an ark. Bark. 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 Yeah. Build an ark for the barks. I need you to build an ark. And he came down. God, God met with him. I mean, God met with him. He gave him the plans, told him what was going on. This is how it's going to happen. But you know, it was, 50, it was 75 to 100 years before anything ever happened. That's, right. That's a long time. It doesn't say that every Monday they had staff meeting and they went over how well things went the last week and they decided what they were going to do next. No, no. It says God said, this is what you're going to do. And for 75 to 100 years, it took him to build that ark. What I love is that it says in the scripture, Noah did all Everything that the Lord called him to do. Right. Noah right. did all. I want, that. I, I want that to be said of me. Nancy did all that the Lord told her to do. I don't want to miss out on an opportunity. That's right. You know, in Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, Habakkuk 2, it says, And the Lord answered me, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets. And that's exactly what I feel like Noah did. He had to have something that was going to last him. He knew dimensions. He knew it all. We don't have those blueprints today. But he knew what he needed to do. So he may run who reads it, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. It might seem slow. Wait for it. It will surely come. Mm. It will not delay. Our timing is not God's timing, and we right. don't always understand that. But I can assure you of this. When God calls us to do something, mm. wait for it. That's right. Wait for it. Yeah. You know, and maybe there is somebody who's here listening in that they've been wrestling. When is it going to happen? Um, at the right time, be assured that God will be faithful. I'm not good at waiting. Um, I, I like things to happen, but um, we had to learn that in our first uh, position we served in Belize. We were pastoring, we were involved in ministry, we were doing children, youth, and we felt like the Lord spoke to us about starting a high school. We thought, mm, don't missionaries build churches? It seemed kind of crazy, but we, we, we began to learn that in Belize what happens is only there's only space in high school for 50% of the population. So if you have good grades or money, there's a place for you. But what happens if your grades aren't good or if you don't have funds? So the Lord spoke to us about reaching that, that audience. So we went to the government, and they gave us a piece of property that, you know, supposedly it was leased land that we can go start building. So we were in Belize City, and we started the process of building, fill dirt. We spent a significant amount of money and had a team there, and somebody came and said, what you doing? And we said, well, building a high school for the glory. And they said, well, why are you building it on my land? And I said, oh, no, no, I have a piece of paper. And he said, I have a piece of paper, too. His is bigger than his Belizean. So we lost. We lost that piece of land. We lost every cent we'd invested. I was discouraged. I went to the government. They said, oh, we made a mistake. Go ahead and sue us. It's okay. We don't have any money. We'll just give you another piece of land. Oh, okay. So we went to see this five acres of property. Or we went to look where it was. The only problem, there was no way to get into it. And so it's like, okay. So we went back and they said, well, if you go a little north, we'll give you another piece of property. We went and saw this nice big sinkhole. I was tired of every door being shut in my face. I was, we weren't looking for work. We were pastoring. We were doing all this ministry. And, and then I told Nancy, I said, I'm tired of it. 
can't be God because, you know, all these things are happening. And so we're going to not talk about it anymore. And she said, that's fine. But what's the Lord saying? Let's play the God card. I knew what the Lord was saying, but I was tired of the battle. We finally were able to purchase some property that didn't come from the government. No one could take away. And we started the process because we knew God had called. It had been a very tough process, but yet we saw the Lord, didn't we? It was, um, it was amazing. The first day that we decided we would have registration, we had no, no plan. We just were going to go up and open the doors and see who came. And um, no advertisement. We had 100 people that registered that day. And we thought, oh, this is good. We've got room for 45 students. How are we going to do this? We had built three buildings. We were going to have 15 students in each building. We were starting with the ninth grade, first form, and then we were going to add a grade each year. So we thought, you know, having 45 students to begin with would be good. Well, we started that year with 99 students, and we had 200 on a waiting list. And we said, okay, Lord, you know, you know what's going on here. We sure don't. But it was incredible. Those kids hunger for the Lord. Mm-hmm. We, I, I had the privilege of teaching Bible and leadership to those kids, and um, they grew in the Lord. It, it was amazing to me, the questions that they would come up with during Bible class, and I loved being there with these kids. Well, at the same time, because there were many families that were, did not have the funds to be able to send their kids to school, we had a work-study program. So after school, a couple afternoons, they'd come and do chores for an hour or two to help with their bill. And I had one student in my class, she was an excellent student, always had her homework done, a smile on her face, just a pretty little girl. And Elizabeth was part of that work-study program. And so I'd say, "Um, Elizabeth, today's your day. Yes, miss, I'm going to be there. But it was like Houdini came in and did something because she disappeared. And I'm like, what in the world? I would look at her in class, the last period. Elizabeth, today's your day. Yes, miss. And then she was gone. Where is, I don't know. I don't know if she's gone, miss. What we didn't know at that time was that Elizabeth's mom had a man that was living in the home who was paying the rent and putting food on the table. And so he thought it was his right to abuse her every afternoon. And she was demanded that she be home. Elizabeth never wanted to leave New Hope High School because New Hope High School was her freedom. It was her refuge. But she had no choice because staying and doing what she was supposed to do at school and then getting home late was far worse for her. Well, why didn't you just go in there and get her out of that situation? That would have been really nice. We weren't aware of it at the time. But what the Lord told us to do was educate these kids so that they could then get jobs to be able to get out of their situation. What if we had said no? We just, we're tired. We're tired of the fight. We just don't want to, the building has just been ridiculous and crazy. Elizabeth was not the only student that had a rough home situation. And that's not unlike a lot of places around here. But this is where God called us Mm. to do, to build this high school. And our obedience brought Elizabeth and a lot of other students their freedom. Mm. It continues to give students, bring students freedom. That's right. It is exciting. We see from that first class, the first group we had, some were pastors, some were leaders, and seeing what they're doing. But in recent years, we were back in the country. We met with the superintendent. And he, he was, we were going through a, a very severe national crisis in the country because there's a systemic problem in Belize of, of financial misappropriation but also immorality. It's very common for a, a man to have a family and a sweetheart on the side. And unfortunately, that entered the church, and so we had two national leaders who had to be removed from their place because of, of uh, terrible situations. And the superintendent was telling us, we have a crisis it's not we don't have people who have leadership abilities, but they have no character to go along with it. So we've got to, we, we need a, a character building program, but we've got to go younger. We need to go to the high school level. So we started dreaming and talking that day about having New Hope as a pilot program where we'd go in and, and establish what we're calling Project Accelerate. I like the name you use as well. But the idea is to build an intensive 
character-building program for young people. We're talking physical. We're talking spiritual. We're talking service. We're talking the, the whole gamut. Challenging young people who are willing to stand up. We're going to ask them to live a pure life in a culture that mocks purity. We're asking young people to do something that, I mean, I, I'm old. It's like God calls someone else. But God calls who he chooses. And he calls who's available. And so would you pray with us? We're just like the same feeling that day when the Lord said, start the high school. We didn't have the time, the treasure, or the ability. But what we had was the voice of God. And so as we, as we face this, this new endeavor, this new project, we don't have the time, talents, or treasures, but what we have is the voice of God. Amen. We're at our Jordan River. And I believe some of you are as well. But you know what happened when, when Joshua and the priests led through? They got rocks in the middle. And when they got to the other side, they made an altar to remind themselves and their family of what the Lord has done. I think it's time we make some new altars as well. And those altars come when we go through the water. Amen. They weren't taking rocks from the previous side. They were taking rocks from the middle of the battle. Does that make sense? It spoke to me this morning while I was sitting there. It's time to take rocks out in the, from the middle of obeying the voice of God and build an altar saying, so far the Lord has sustained me and he will sustain. Amen. I want to challenge you today as, as a church. You've been involved in missions. You've heard the stories. We are very grateful, but there's still more work to do. And our obedience to what God tells us to do, brings freedom. What happens if we don't? What happens to Elizabeth? So I want to challenge you. Take a step in the river. Grab a rock and build an altar. The Lord has been faithful. I better quit because I can just keep going. Brother, come on up. I'm proud of your people. I'm proud of you. I want you to know something. You're doing a good job. You're the man of God, and I love you. Amen. Amen. You know, the, the idea is to, uh, so, much, so much was said. Even Friday night, if you were here, Jimmy Seller said, take a step. It's about taking a step. I feel, I feel a desire to, to go to another country and help missions take a step. I feel like going on a short-term short trip and build, helping build buildings take a step. I feel impressed to the Lord to give to missions take a step, step of faith. One person's obedience is another person's freedom. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to challenge you this morning. It's our last mission service, so I'm going to challenge you. If you got these cards, you probably did. You came in. Again, if you're part of this church, great. If not, you're a guest. Uh, just listen in. If you want to give too, it's great, but just listen in for a minute. I want you to take this commitment card. I want you to write your name on it and say, God, what would you have us do to help people hear the gospel all over the world? And not only over the world, in our community too. They're, they're, they're missionaries we're picking up. They're missionaries that we have, we've helped for years. Um, but what we do is we send support to missionaries so they can do the work they do. We send tools. We pray for them. We bless them. We, we go the extra mile for them through the local church that happens. That's why you get to hear stories like Jay and Nancy's story about uh, freedom for a young lady and other young ladies and young people. That's why you get to hear stories uh, like the other night about uh, going to places that are hard but seeing God do his work. And so I want to challenge you to be a part of this, to give above and beyond what you feel like you can give. Kim and I were, were talking before service, at the begin, actually during service, in the first service. And I told Kim, I said, what do you think we should commit this year to missions? And I gave her a number and she said, okay. And then a few minutes later, she kind of tapped me on the leg or got my attention and said, no, I think the Lord's telling us to give more. And she gave me a number, how much more? And to be honest with you, this is humbling to me, but that was the exact number the Lord spoke to me this week to give to missions. 
But when I'm talking to Kim, I'm being a little bit more conservative. So I'm like, well, maybe not that much. But when Kim said that, she was on the money. I'd already, Lord already spoke to my heart this week about what we should do. I'm going to ask you to step out in faith. Go the extra mile, a little bit more. Pastor, I'm not sure what I can afford. That's not the issue. That really isn't the issue. The issue is, what is God speaking to your heart to do? Because we're going to ask you in a moment not to put a number down yet, but to pray, God, what would you have us do for missions this year? As a church, we have a $150,000 goal for missions. Everything I mentioned earlier, and again, they, they shared an impre- impressive message. Everything I me- mentioned earlier only comes about by people stepping out in faith and giving. Whether it's Mark Bishop at uh, in Greer or uh, Andrew Bullard in Seneca, whose church we've helped, Chris Honeycutt in Myrtle Beach, churches that are in our state, the campus ministry at Clemson and University of South Carolina, or whether it's uh, missionaries that are going to Ecuador, those who are going back to Bangladesh, people that are doing a work for God in countries, people with names that you don't even know, people you've not even met. I'm going to ask you to go the extra mile. I'm going to ask you to take that step, let the waters part, and see what God will do. Amen? Amen. I'm going to just be be seated, because if I ask you to stand, people start leaving, so that's not what I want. Just be seated for a moment. I'm going to ask God, I want to commit to mission. So what we encourage people to do is make a commitment to missions and then also, if they can, to give a first fruit offering. In other words, a portion of that give today. Just kind of launch us into missions. Launch us into next year. So I'm going to ask you to be generous today. Ask God what we would have you commit for next year to give to missions and maybe a first fruit offering. First fruit kind of beginning offering to missions. All of this goes to missions, y'all. Helping people locally, statewide, all over the world. So would you pray with me? Let's pray. Ask God to speak to your heart about what he would have you do. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, you would speak to our hearts about what you would have us do for global missions. We want to be all in, all for Jesus. We want to be a, make a difference. We want to be somebody. All the things we've said this year, Lord, we want to do and be. We want to, we want to do and be. God, the reason we can help accelerate in rooms of grace and young life and Chi Alpha and that missionary that is in Honduras and that missionary that is serving you in orphanage in Mexico and that missionary that's serving you in Ecuador, that missionary that is in India right now, the missionaries, God, that are in countries that can't even be mentioned, who are in this 1040 window, who are in the places where the gospel is not freely proclaimed. The reason we do this, God, is because people give. And Lord, we pray, speak to hearts of people right now to give generously and commit generously to the kingdom, to the work of God. We know missions is your heart, Lord. We pray that we would be a part of what you're wanting to do. Not what we want to do, what you're wanting to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just write down whatever God speaks to you. Like I said, to be honest with you, I had something else written down earlier and I tore up the one I had and did a brand new card. Let God speak to your heart. As you commit to missions, as you turn these cards in today, we have Be Somebody shirts we want to give you. Can't give them to you today because something happened and they're not here today. But we, our whole thing this year is Be Somebody. We have a brand new Be Somebody, which is Garnet. It's a Garnet shirt. Praise the Lord for Garnet. <laughs> garnet shirt. Uh, but it's, it's for you to proclaim Be Somebody. The back of it shares about love God, love people, share hope. It's our vision statement. Uh, we, we have people in this church that wear that in different areas just so they can share what that means. It's a great opportunity to share your faith. So I'm going to ask you to be a part of that. Stand with me if you would. As God speaks to your heart today, again, as you leave today, I'm, I'm going to let you go. We're not going to, it's the opposite of last week's service, right? I mean, you know, last week's service almost didn't ever end. But anyway, um, I'm going to just ask you to talk to Jay and Nancy in the back. Drop your commitment cards into our ushers as you leave today. We have ushers just at these doors. So if you leave out these doors, make sure you go around to see these ushers who will be back in the back and uh, give generously tithes, offerings. We believe God will bless you. Thank God for missions. Thank God for you, you guys who do this work for God. Um, even in difficult times, God is blessed and we're thankful for it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.